But if there's no money, where did they get more than $1 trillion to fund their wars in Afghanistan and in Iraq? And where did they get the money to start another war in Libya? Where did they get that money from? And here, as an immigrant too, not just a student, I'm facing a struggle against the capital system that every time it fails to provide the needs of humanity, it says it's my fault. And then we have the right-wing populists who say we're all criminals, we're thieves. But let me tell you something. A thief and a criminal doesn't wake up at 6 a.m. in the morning to clean houses. A criminal doesn't wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning to work in the fields. A criminal doesn't work cleaning in, the, in a jack-in-the-box, doesn't have two jobs and send the money to his family. The real criminal are those who benefit from the war. The real criminal are those who benefit from incarcerating more people of color than all of us who go to the universities. Those are the real criminals. <laughs> However, we are not alone. Like I mentioned, we are being attacked globally, but we are also resisting globally. In Egypt, not so long ago, people overthrew the dictator Mubarak. In Tunisia, a country that is following the neoliberal model, the very same one that Mexico is following, and many other countries like Colombia, the people united, they formed the resistance committees in each neighborhood, and they overthrew the dictator Ben Ali. And not so far away from here, the people of Puerto Rico, students just like you and me, went on strike for weeks, and they stopped the government from increasing their fees $200. So, and, they, and guess what? They were inspired by us because on March 4th, in 2010, we had the largest student strikes and demonstrations in the history of the United States. So we're saying, enough is enough. We're taking this in our own hands. We're capturing our destiny. And like the second declaration of La Habana says, and this is going to be in Spanish now. Y como dice la segunda declaración de La Habana, como si fuera una profecía, dice, Ahora sí, la historia tendrá que contar con los pobres de América, con los explotados y vilipendiados de América Latina, que han decidido empezar a escribir para ellos mismos, para siempre, su historia. Esto fue dicho en el año 1962 en La Habana, Cuba. Pero parecía profecía hoy, porque estamos diciendo ya basta. En el primero de mayo, en el 2006, cuando se trató de pasar esa ley racista, HR 4437, paralizamos las ciudades en una huelga general que jamás se había visto en la historia de este país. E igualmente, en el 2006, los estudiantes, el 4 de marzo, tuvimos un día de acción nacional en el que hubo huelgas, paros, protestas y todo en contra de la privatización de la educación. Esto demuestra que no debemos de ser agachados, somos poderosos. Y por eso, como decimos en Mecha, la unión hace la fuerza, unidos tendremos la legalización, unidos tendremos educación, unidos tendremos empleos para nosotros, unidos tenemos... Salud, unidos vamos a tener nuestro destino. Por eso digo, ¡Que vivan los estudiantes! ¡Viva! ¡Que vivan los estudiantes! ¡Viva! ¡Que vivan los padres! ¡Viva! ¡Que vivan la raza! ¡Viva! ¡Que vivan la raza! ¡Viva! ¡Eso es todo! ¡Te venga de siempre! As a teacher, it is such an honor to hear a Latino combine and marry the mind with the heart and speak with so much conviction that you can't help but to be inspired. And that is the greatest privilege of my job, is to hear people who were once silenced to be strengthened enough to speak in behalf of not only themselves,
but their country and their whole community. Jose, muchísimas gracias, carnalita. Aplaudo de vuelta. So now we'd like to continue with the scholarship presentation. And we have somebody coming up here. To, Mary Alice Bonilla is going to come up and present the 